What's going on, everybody? Welcome to February 2024's Com C. I guess you could call it stats for the month of February. If you're new to this and just catch this for some odd reason because you want to learn more about Com C, this is just my process. I started at the end of November uh, with listing. I transferred a lot of upper deck EPAC stuff over. As you can see on the screen right now, you can see three cent, three cent, thirteen cent. That was all off of upper deck EPAC stuff. Just been sitting there since 2015. It's money, regardless. I didn't have to pay the fifty cents to have it transferred over. I think Com C has a lot of advantages with their way they list and sell, vice versa. All the stuff going on to eBay, all for fifty cents. It's it's a time management piece that I use mostly because they can sit there and put. 10,000 cards on there for me where 10,000 cards probably take me two weeks of solid dedication plus to do Especially when you start dealing with thick relic cards that don't fit through those fancy uh, Scan machines everybody's got nowadays So we're gonna keep us going for a year see where it ends up at so total items for sale 1026 we did break the thousand marks then kept it over the total SRP that they're saying in value is 2700 but there's 333 items without an SRP, so it's basically valued more. I don't pay much attention to that. My total asking price is a little over 2800 I've broken the $1,000 in sales mark. I would make little clapping noises, but I really despise that on videos. <laughs> so we won't do it here. Total items sold since I started, 432 Like I said, it was end of November. Um... I purchased 18 items. I believe there's only one item I purchased. I'll show that here in a second. The other piece... Oops, I'm on the wrong screen. That's why. Where'd my other mouse go? There it is. You can see I've sent a lot of stuff in. The stuff here at these low numbers, believe it or not, I don't pay attention to it because this top one, they still have over 100 cards they haven't uh, shot over yet. They got to March 13th. Guess what? Nine days? All of a sudden, now it's starting to get discounted for me to get that. Once they put them up, they take a percentage of that 50 cents off. But as you guys can see, I would say somewhere around this one says where it's due by June 3rd out to me is what I set in in March. Uh, from people sent it, buying people stuff that they send to me, to card shows, to collections, whatever it may be. That's what I sent in. I sent them in like three to four account boxes. A lot of these were relic cards, so as you can see it a lot. It won't be, you know, 300 cards in there. Plus, believe it or not, when you start doing penny sleeves, they do take up room. Think about a pack of 100 penny sleeves, how big it is. So, but this sent a lot in, so we will probably start seeing a lot of this, I would say, April-ish, May starting to come about. So we'll see what happens. They just got another box in today, so we're, we've been setting in. All right, let me change the view here. I'll show you the one card I bought. Ert. Yep, I made the noise. Ert. I bought this 2019-20 Opeachy Platinum um, All-Star Image Variation, Connor McDavid. The guy had it up for $100. I believe that's what it was valued at when I was trying to figure it out. It is CSG, but a CSG 10 is really hard to get. It's not like candy given out like gma and stuff like that but i got it for half off so i took it the only card i bought all month so it's been 49.50 all right let's go to some seller stats by month there we go all right so as you guys can see from january is a big dip november like i said that 49 dollars was all upper deck e-pack december they started giving me a little bit of stuff in there and then I end up winning an auction dirt cheap. I remember it was a PSA 10. Uh, oh, I, uh, I'm trying to remember the guy. It was a, not Cal McCarr. Cole Caulfield card. And I posted it up for like $249. I got it for like $80, bucks, $70, something like that, and it sold. That was a big, huge, well, I guess you can use the word flip onto that. Actually, it was going to come back to myself to hold because I priced way up high. I didn't think anybody would pay for it. Lo and behold, somebody bought it. Uh, January, as you guys can see, was one seventy one forty. We got an extra about one hundred and twenty dollars, roughly one hundred nineteen dollars uh, in a month of February. Eighty eight sales, so not bad, not bad at all. We'll go through some of this stuff again. 
a lot of the Upper Deck E-Packs still sell. And I think when I did Upper Deck E-Pack, I transferred like 400 items over. I want to say there's about 250 left on there. And it was all Goodwin Champions and um, Hockey from 15 on that I just had sitting in there. Free transfer. I said, what the heck? I'll take a few cents for a card I probably would never get rid of. And it's actually added up. All right, let's go back a screen. Oh, I lied. We're going to go back two screens. There it is. Sales history. I'll fix the screen again here because I tried doing this multiple and it was getting screwed up. Oop. Oh, I see what I did there. Let me go. Wait. I had the wrong button being held in. Okay, I gave you guys the dates and the pictures. So, let's go down. I'll pull it up to the top once I find 12. Okay, so right here down. So, as you guys can see, some of the stuff it sold. A 95 Upper Deck Base Warren Sap. That was out of a collection box. I probably paid pesos on a penny. You know, I got 38 cents for it. This is where I start talking about that SRP. A lot of times I don't agree with it. More Upper Deck E-Pack stuff. This was just sitting in my stuff, like I said, like 4, 8, 11, 14, 16 cents right there, 17, 18, 19. You know, eventually it adds up to a couple dollars a month onto it. I did sell the Claude Giroux Young Gun. I made $18. It sold for eighteen ninety five. It was from eBay, which I can't show you. There were quite a few eBay sales, okay? I'll try to note some of them. And, I mean, even some of the eBay sales were the $0.04, cent, $0.03 cent stuff. But the Claude Giroux, I bought it for $4. I had to go back and dig and find where I put the uh, sheet of paper at when I paid for all those. I, I almost thought I threw it away. Well, anyhow, that was a good pickup, you know. I looked at it for grading possibilities. Even though they say it's supposed to be valued at $35, I sold them selling around $20. So I parked mine at $18.95 because... I figured it probably was not going to sell on Com C when they placed on eBay with the fees that they add on to it. So just because it shows eighteen ninety five on Com C, it might be like a twenty one dollar card on there because they add in the eBay fees to make sure I'm still getting what I'm supposed to be getting for that card. Where there's only like I think it's five percent on to here. They might pay like seven or eight percent over there, but they make sure I get my money either way. Um. Let's see, that's more Upper Deck E-Pack, E-Pack, look how car, that was an Upper Deck E-Pack. Fred Couples, Ink Driver, was an eBay sale. Uh, $21.95 it sold for, got it for, tw or got profit $20.85. I did buy that card for $10, so I did double my money back there. The uh, card underneath it, the Goodwin Champions, oh, I'm not even going to say it. First name, I'm not even going to come close, NB Park. That I got for fifty cents, sold it for a dollar twenty-two. So again, some profit onto it. This one here was kind of interesting. Uh, Two thousand thirteen in game prospects, present, and future of Vetchkin and Zykov. <laughs> Look at the price they say there. Now it's numbered out ninety. These were selling for about eleven to fourteen dollars. I figured, okay, market nine ninety-five. They'll probably have it at like eleven fifty on eBay. Well, somebody bought this. I kept getting offers on this card and the card below of seven dollars. I'm like, no, that's like thirty percent off of you know eBay stuff, and I still got to pay five percent on that. No, somebody actually seen it and said, yep, this is a good deal. So don't be afraid. There'll be guys on there you'll recognize their names. I always send you offers. They're gonna try to get as low as they can every time. You can counter them. They won't ever respond back. But this was a good one. I paid. Three for this and three for the Ilya Kovacek and Malkin out of 50 Ultimate Duo jersey. It got 760 there, so profit of 360. Well, minus the 50 cents onto these. And then again, $3, so 645 minus 50 cents. That was what the profit is. Spike Dudley Raw card. This is one of the ones I got at that one show where it was right before Christmas in Lexington. And the guy had it like all in, I forget what it was. It was basically like a dollar a card. And he goes, hey, if you buy more than 50, I'll work with you on the price. And I'm like, okay, I figure, you know, he might take off 10 or 20%. He took off 40. 
So this was originally a dollar. I got it for sixty cents and it sold for two eighty. Uh, nope, that was an upper deck e pack. Some more of these that I got here. I bought them, and I did lose on these. <laughs> but overall, with all the hockey, I had no idea what these were worth. But when I started looking them up on here, you gotta take your L's. You gotta take your L's. I'm here to show it too. That's a 47 cent loss per card. But instead of them sitting out there forever, I just said, sell them, get rid of them, at least get some money back out of it. Big Bad, another one that came out of a collection, pesos on the penny. So 332 profit minus the 50 cents. A bunch of young guns that was sitting in upper deck E-pack, you guys can see. Upper Deck E-Pack, Chris Carter, this was another one out of a collection, pesos on the penny, $1.17, so uh, take 50 cents off and heck, we'll call it a penny there. Uh, Jalen Williams Origins, I got this in a break to where I hit the Jalen Williams Chinese Origins Auto, which paid for my break plus. So all these were pure profit that I had, so take 50 cents off of it. Had to look what date we're on. A lot of stuff did sell. Uh, John Mechie, another one. I think I was in that for sixty cents too. Off that, it was either a dollar or sixty cents. I forget which guy I bought that from. JJ Watt, light blue prism. You know, another one that was in a collection. Same with these Shays ears. I did lose on these originally when I sent them in. They were there was hardly any on there, and they were asking like a dollar fifty per. And all of a sudden, other people just dumped Shazier on there. So I just ate my loss and moved on with it. Because it was either me buy up like 20 cards of him and sit on more just to make my money on him. Or just let him go. Uh, Hendrix Auto. I think I got that for $2 or 3 One of the two. But still profit onto that. You do learn le learn to learn on this a lot. Like, man, if you miss that mark and somebody else dumps in cards of the uh, ones you have in and you're on the back end of that, you do get hit hard. More red power prisms sold. Antonio Gates, these were out of 40, uh, 49, and then Jason Witten. Again, these were out of a collection, so pesos on the pe good old penny, so good profit there. Uh, Yanu Smith, orange prism. Again, that was probably about a four cent profit, but you know we take it. This one here, I this is why I, uh, when I bought all those, I got them at fifty cents because I picked this up and it sold for five sixty five. I knew it would make sense eventually down the road with all the autos and relics I bought. I may have some bad ones, but I'm definitely going to find some surprises. This was one that sold there. That was out of a collection, so about a six cent profit. Wit and light blue prism again, probably about two thirty, two twenty nine profit. Uh, total D Shack took the little L on that one. Upper deck E pack, girly light blue prism, you know, about fifteen cent profit there. Another one of these Magic Johnsons uh, sold. I bought these at all of them at two dollars. At one time, I was getting like twelve dollars a card. I'm down to six. Dirk Tops Finest Rookie. I paid a dollar. I remember a dollar for this. Seven fifty five. It sold for. Jordan, Ertz took the L. That was Upper Deck E Pack. No, there was something else on here. Oh, Trevor Linden All Time Future Auto. I pulled this in a box on Upper Deck E Pack. Got clear sixty three forty one onto it. I, at the time, I think they were ninety a box, and I had a bunch of other stuff that was in that sold. So I pretty much broke even. I want to say on that box is these. I think they were only one. No, I take it back. There were two autos per box. I'm trying to remember who the other auto was, but uh, I ended up getting uh, like forty or fifty on. I made profit on the box though, just off the two autos. Thankfully. You don't see that too often. Uh, Artifacts base LeBron. That was another one I paid fifty cents for. Three fifty one. Uh, this was here. Hockey just started dumping from December. Niedermeyer. I was in for this. The Pronger and the Palfi all two dollars a card. 
565, 470, 470 sales. So a little bit of profit there. There were some more relics here from uh, golf. Again, 50 cents a card, so a dollar, dollar. So dollar thirteen profit on each of those. Gunner Hendersons. I found those in the 50 cent box thing. Again, nice profit there. This is all smaller stuff. It's nothing real big or huge or crazy. I, I use I save that stuff for in person to just sell. This here is more where I float everything else at. Mika Rantman rookie jersey. This snap, I no sooner put this up, I remember I was listing and it was already sold. Same with the Jack Johnson. I know I paid a dollar for Miko, and I want to say I paid two on Jack. Uh, Stafford, that was in the collection. Another um, golf cart took the L on it. Evan Ingram, light blue prism. That was another one out of a collection, 475. So, like, 424 profit there. But you will take losses. You just can't come on here and think you're going to make profit on every card. Tyreek Hill, orange prisms. Uh, I'd say, like, 305 a pop profit on those. Shaq again. There was, there was hardly any Shaqs on there by the time they listed all mine. Somebody must have sent in like 500 shacks throughout the early 90s, and my stuff just got clobbered. Jerry Rice stickums. I was in those. Uh, th those were both collections, so made profit on it. Tony Gwynn Bat, I paid a two dollars for it, sold it for three twenty two, so in it for two fifty, made seventy two cents. Nothing real crazy there. Halliburton. Upper Deck E-Pack. Jordan. Bought this at somebody's $2 box. Sold for eleven forty. dollars Oh, that's in January. So as you guys can see, you know, going through and spending hours in them boxes can pay off. If you start looking at it as in grounds of how much, how many man hours are in it, I'd probably make like $6 an hour. But... When you're only doing this, you know, part-time, soon to be full-time, as when this video comes out. But, you know, you can make profits. It's sitting there waiting. It's putting in a lot of work. A lot of work onto this stuff. You have to go in there. I go in there twice a week just to check. The beginning of the week, I check everything that's priced at $1.95 or more. And see how many people undercut me. Does it make sense to buy those them out? Or, you know, just lower my price. What am I in the card for? And then normally on like a Friday night or Saturday or Sunday during the day, depending on when the hockey game's on, I'll do all everything that's like a dollar ninety-four and below and just start looking at stuff like that. But you have to constantly keep an eye on your inventory. And it's painful. I mean, a thousand cards, that's a lot of time going through and looking at. I probably spend two hours a week just doing that. So just like anything else you do, there is a lot of work to it. What I do is I pay somebody else 50 cents a card to do the scans, the listings, and they post it on their site along with eBay, and we let it roll. So hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be way up in the positive amounts. I'm going to go back to the home page. You guys may see my balance. It don't matter, though. Um, this is what I wanted to look at. But by month, like I said, you know, just hit over $1,000 in sales since the end of November. I've heard people say they've been doing it for a year and just barely getting to the $1,000 mark. Hopefully what uh, a couple of the bigger sellers have talked to me about on her and gave me advice on. Well, just two people, I should say. It, it, maybe it'll pay off in the long run, but you have to stay very consistent and on top of it, just like anything else. And the best piece of advice that I was given, I will pass on if you do want to start making a Com C account up, is that if you have that kind of inventory, send 100 to 300 cards every week to them. And eventually, every week, you'll have cards posted. It can come at all times. Usually, it's at nighttime. Anywhere, like, 8 p.m. has been my earliest, but they've averaged between, like, 9 and midnight. 
sometimes 2 a.m. they'll post, you know. But you might only see one card out of that order. You might see 20. You never know. And then you might not see that order again for three weeks. They'll post a couple more. But it was probably the best piece of advice that I was given that I could pass out to anybody else is that stay consistent with it. Mail off, you know, weekly, bi-weekly. Or if you're, you know, you can only hit so many shows or, you know, to find the stuff, you know, once a month. But at least you're always going to have inventory there waiting to be processed in. It's fresh. And I think with the inventory I bought up until this point, I'm probably around 1200 I want to say, roughly on spending on all that stuff going in. So that's pretty good overall. But you really, really have to go to shows or find collections to buy in order to maximize, you know, your profits on this. Because, again, you're already losing the 50 cents a card plus the shipping out to them. I, that's why I do the three three or 400 count boxes. They cost $8.45 in a priority bubbled envelope to send out to them. So, you know, it kind of adds like maybe a penny a card on to it for shipping. But... Yep, that's probably the best piece of advice. So we'll see what March will do. We're already on March 4th as I'm making this video. Only $6.42 sold. Averaging $0.64 cents an item. But that's because of the Upper Deck EPAC stuff I transferred over. So hopefully we get a lot more listed this month. Um, this video also gives me a lot to look back to each month to see like, wow. What have I done wrong? What am I slacking on? Everything else. Keeps me accountable, I guess you can say. But guys, I appreciate y'all sticking with me for over 20 minutes going through talking about some of the sales. Maybe you guys caught some trends. I don't know. Um, on to it. But if anybody ever needs some help on ComC, I'll give you whatever I know and knowledge. It's not a whole lot. It's just what was given to me. And I've just been flying with it. It's been doing pretty well overall. Baronet, you guys take care. Until next video, I'm out.